Rock Christian Fellowship. Good to see y'all this morning. Woohoo! And so, uh, you know, I I'm gonna have to pray and lay hands on my head about being a little bit better about big anniversaries because really the Lord has to remind me. So. You know, we celebrated five years of the Reno outpouring a few weeks ago. Yeah? Well, it turns out the Lord was talking to me about a week ago, and he reminded me, he's, I think, what was he, oh, I think I talked about this last week a little bit, how I'm always nervous, you know, before church on Sunday morning, and I think that's a good thing. It's a good thing to be, because it's a big deal for me to come and stand up here and and minister and so I should be a little bit nervous and that was when the Lord showed me he said he asked me actually asked me he said how many services have you done at River Rock and I thought to myself well I really don't know and so I just kind of thought well we're coming up on 10 years there's 52 Sundays in a year and I thought wow we could be coming up on 500 and uh, I actually went on the internet and went back through the calendars uh, going back to 2003 because our first service was the last Sunday in 2003 and uh, I believe that today we're on the 503rd Sunday service of River Rock. Now that's the good news. The bad news is is that oh yeah you're looking that that is the River Rock band of uh, those of you who have Facebook I posted this on Facebook a couple days ago I think the first person you recognize, Wendy. Yay! Uh, yeah. And then Sandy Moniz, who was on our team for a long time, and she still drops in. She's still our good friend. She's sort of our, our daughter. We've known her since she was five, wow. and she's my son's age, so she's 24 now. So we've known her for a long time. Um, then the next one is Sarai. Plots now is her last name. Her name was Sarai Stamps, and the Stamps are a family that have been a big part of River Rock over the years. And then the very far one, who you probably, is just a blur to me, that's actually my son, Robbie, who, uh, of course, lives down in Orange County and does his thing in Orange County. So, um, my scripture, Psalm 100, verse 5, for the Lord is good. His loving kindness is everlasting and his faithfulness to all generations. Amen. Amen. And so faithfulness is a big part of church going forward every day, just stepping, you know, faithfulness, long suffering, um, steadfastness. Those are all fruits of the spirit. And those are the things that will make your walk with the Lord successful. When you don't want to always quit and start again. And I can say that because I'm sort of a living example of someone who has quit and started again uh, too many times probably. And so Wendy and I are just being faithful at River Rock and one day at a time. And all of a sudden you get up to 10 years. Now we just have to get me to remember that at the end of this year we have our 10 year anniversary. Amen? So we should do something nice for that. Now, so I was reading something nice on the internet that someone had wrote, and they essentially were saying that River Rock has heart. And I got to thinking that when people come and compliment me, and I'm not sure, I kind of, I'm not always sure it, it's, this is a compliment, but I always take it as a compliment. But people are always like, oh, I'm just so amazed that you just keep on going no matter what. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, all right. I guess that's good. I mean, but that's the way we should all be as we just go forward, right? We don't give up. You know, uh, uh, it's such an easy thing to give up. You know, we live in a society that wants to have lack of commitment. Why? And why don't we want to have commitment? Because we want to be able to give up at any moment. Yes, yeah. come on. We desire to give up. Yes. Like, oh my gosh, can I give up now? Oh, that bad thing happened. Now can I give up? Yep. Right? Yes. Can I give up now? Yeah. Okay, that's not the way that we do. So people 
I translated this in my mind to say that what people are really saying about River Rock is that River Rock has heart. Yes, it does. Amen. Okay? River Rock has heart. And that's what I'm, my message is this morning is that River Rock has heart and you have heart because you're part of River Rock. Okay? So let's talk about what heart is. So the first thing is here is, um, oh, May is in the back. May is our photographer. Would you wave at everybody? Turn your heads around and wave at May. May takes a lot of the really beautiful pictures you see on our website and on the emails I send out. Uh, May takes those. So afterwards, you should tell her what lovely pictures they are. Yeah. And, um, and uh, so she does really great pictures. And May, what I wanted to tell you is next time you come take pictures, we need to get some pictures of some people hugging as they come through the door of River Rock. Because I had to sort of, this is like internet girl hugging there. <laughs> and we need some of our own people hugging May. So next time you come and bring your camera, have some people hug up here. And uh, get the Gomez's to do some hugging and different people to hug. We, maybe we could have a hug off or something. Yeah. Yeah. Take pictures of people <laughs> hugging and see who wins the hug off, right? And so when you, say, when you say, okay, River Rock has heart, the first thing I thought of is that we love one another. And people always say that. Oh, when I came and visited River Rock, I just remember I felt so loved. And that's really what people are looking for. In fact, we're getting ready for September 22nd. You should mark your calendars. Hopefully you all keep a calendar on your cell phone so you don't forget. I know I always say mark your calendars. Everyone's like... No, really. You should mark your calendar. September 22nd is Friend Day. Because what's happening in our society today is even though we're more connected than ever, we're on Facebook, I'm talking with my friends that are all over the world. You know, every time I go to a new country, I make new Facebook friends. And I'm talking to people on Norway and the Philippines and Israel and all over the place. But at the same time, people are feeling less connected less a part of a body, less a part of a family. And one thing we have here at River Rock is we have a family. Yes, amen. And people around you are crying out for real, authentic relationships. And the problem with the church, with people's perception of the church, is the last place you can have an authentic relationship is in the church. But the fact of the matter is, is that the church is the place that you can have the best, most real, authentic relationship. Right? And that's really what River Rock's about. When I think of heart and River Rock, I think of a loving group of people that really cares for one another and can be authentic with one another. That's what everybody says. If you read the books, I don't read the books, I read the people who read the books. <laughs> but that's what's happening in our society. People are feeling less connected, less committed, and it starts in the relationship between a husband and wife, yeah. right? I just read uh, a story, uh, I think I just saw this on the news the other day, that in the African-American community, 73% of the babies are born out of wedlock. Now, if you say that there's a 60% divorce rate, now you have a whole group of people that has around 15% of the kids in that group grow up with a mom and a dad. 85% grow up not knowing what a committed relationship is. And, and it's... And I only say that one just because I just, it was just on the news in the last week or two. But the fact of the matter is, across, across our culture, people are losing heart. They're losing commitment. They're losing the steadfastness that it takes to create long-term relationships. Right? You know, my, my wife and I come from a family of intact uh, marriages my my mom and my dad were married for I can't remember but a long time till my mom passed away 
um, but a lot of society doesn't even have that. They don't, they don't even have a television show to watch now. You know, you used to have shows on TV. Now the shows are the new normal. Right? Yeah. Which is the new messed up. Right? Isn't that true? So, so one of the things that River Rock, we need to remember is we need to be there. We are a, a, a loving, caring place already, and we need to really uh, glom onto that. You know, we really need to, to make sure that when new visitors come in through the door that they really feel loved and they really feel cared for. And then we need to realize that real relationships are committed relationships. Because what happens in our society is people have relationships till they get tired of them, then they leave. Oh, I'll go do this somewhere else. And so what you have is a lot of shallow relationships. Right? And it happens in the church. People go to one church till they get offended, then they go to another church till they get offended. You have to have commitment if you're going to have anything good in life. Think about it. Every good thing in life involves a commitment. Having children. Having a marriage. Having a career. Right? Didn't I just hit about the top three things that are important in life? And how about, number one, your relationship with God. And having a relationship with the body of Christ that you stick with it and you don't just leave because time gets tough. Yep, amen. Thank you. Got an amen from my wife. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> All right, doing good. That's, a, that's, a, that's as good as it gets. Yes. <laughs> when your wife's amening you and you're a pastor, you know it's a good day. <laughs> right, amen. So last week we talked about... Um, uh, David and uh, David we talked about how David was the least of his brothers but when it got time to God to make a king over Israel God chose David and we talked about how when God chose many of us he didn't choose us because we were the smartest or the handsomest or had the most hair or whatever it is right God sometimes chose us because they were the least of us so that when something good happened through us, people would look and say, well, that couldn't have been Eric. It must have been God. Amen. Right? Isn't that it? I, I, I'm pretty confident that's why God chose me. And uh, so out of that, in verse 7 of 1 Samuel 16, it says, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at the height of his stature, for God sees not as man sees, for man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Amen. The Lord looks at the heart. Now, do you know that the word heart is the most anthropologically used term in the entire Bible? Okay? So... You're saying, well, what does anthropological have to do with? Well, anthro means man, right? So it's kind of like the science of man is anthropology. So, so the, the, the word that's used most often in the Bible to describe man is the word heart. Okay? Wow. Now, think about it. The word heart has all kinds of different meanings, doesn't it? So, for instance, one meaning of the word heart is I have a pump that's pumping blood through my body. That's my heart. Okay? But I don't think that when God says, for a man looks at the heart, at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart, I don't think the Lord's like looking at your pump and going, wow, that Eric has a good pump in there. <laughs> We'll just make him the pastor. Right? And I don't think that when somebody writes on Yelp or Facebook or something like that and says what they like about River Rock, that River Rock has a big heart, that they're saying we have a big pump. Right? So what is God talking about? Well, 
The next uh, chapter after 1 Samuel 16, coincidentally, is 1 Samuel chapter 17, which is the story of David and Goliath. And that's a great story about how much um, a young boy, really, how much heart he has, right? Okay, now let me do a couple definitions of heart and then we'll get into the story of David and Goliath. We're just going to touch on it, but let's talk about this. So the Hebrew word uh, for heart is levav, and it really means all these things, mind, heart, soul, conscious, emotions, courage. Now what you're going to find is that heart is a word we use all the time but it's really difficult to pin it down, right? On the day you got saved, you say, I gave my heart to the Lord. Did you rip your pump out of your body and hand it to Jesus? No. When you say David had heart, it's not the pump. What does it mean to have heart? What does it mean when the Lord says he looks at your heart? What's that all about? Now the, the Greek word we recognize a little bit more, cardia, is used. We talked about this. And by the way, when it says over a thousand times, that's lavav, the uh, Hebrew, and cardia, the Greek, combined. One definition is the center for both physical and emotional, intellectual, and moral activities. So it's kind of a whole bunch of stuff. And when you start looking around for a definition of what does heart mean, you generally see a list of things. Isn't that interesting? You know, I love to find things in the Bible that we use all the time, but we really have not really thought through very well. And that's what heart is. It's one of those things that we use that all the time. We all know what it means, but we don't know what it means. Okay? Now, we used to, I used to preach this sermon all the time, and we would all say it together, and I, a uh, few of you have been around long enough to remember this, but we would say, I am a spirit. Yeah, you can, yeah, do it after me. I am a spirit. I am a spirit. I have a soul, and I live in a body. Right? Because we are a spirit. Is that true? Yeah. Of course we are a spirit. When we go to heaven, we're not bringing the body. Amen to that. Okay? And the longer you live in your body, the more you're ready to get rid of it. Amen, amen. Right? Okay, so uh, let's do that one more time. I am a spirit. I live in a body. And I have a soul. Okay, so there you go. Now, the soul is mind, will, and emotions. So where's the heart? Where's our heart in all of this? Okay? Now, as I've studied through what other people have written on this, they most often talk about things like mind, will, and emotions, which we talk about our soul. But you'll see, and some of you are already, I know you got the scriptures going through your heads. You're already, well, wait a minute. We're supposed to love the Lord with all our heart and all our mind and all our soul. So... If that's the soul, we have a heart too. And whoever's writing all these three-part things, probably, we could probably say, I am a spirit, I live in a body, and I have a heart and a soul. Yeah. Right? Now, this is a good example. I talk about this a lot in my sermons, and this is a good place to say it again. Western people want to figure everything out and draw diagrams. Eastern people don't care. So that's why sometimes us Western people kind of can drive ourselves crazy trying to figure out exactly the way it goes. The Eastern people didn't care. Hey, got a heart. I have heart. David had heart. Right? So let's talk a little bit about our heart. I'm not even going to go to that one. So there's 
that the Lord looks at our heart. How many are happy that the Lord looks at our heart and not our outward appearance? Amen. Okay. Amen. Yes and no. Right? We can fake it on the outwards, can't we? Yep. We can go to the gym. We can work out. We can buy a nice shirt, nice pair of pants, smile. But you can't fake it when your heart. When the Lord says he looks at our heart, he's like, well, he's really seeing us. Amen. Right? Amen. We've talked about that a lot, isn't it? You know, I've, I've mentioned this before, is that, you know, when we are got caught in the flooding river and we're being washed down the river, we're sure that God can see us and why isn't he saving us? But when we're in our home, locked away in our private closet, doing things we shouldn't do, we're like, oh, God can't see me in here. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, amen. I was thinking about that today. I was thinking about two families who've left our fellowship because really bad things happen to them. I mean, really bad things happen to them. And when really bad things happen to people, what do people do? Do they blame themselves? No! They blame God! That's God's fault that that terrible thing happened. Okay, well, was it God's fault that that really good thing happened? Yeah. Okay, here's the point. The point is, is God sees you when you're going down the river and he may save you, but God also sees you when you're doing that other thing. Fill in the blank. You can't have it both ways. Yep. But we do. We think that way, don't we? I know. You're all like, no, not us, Pastor. We're pure and holy. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is one of my favorites. This is kind of my one that I've been using on my birthday cards this year. I like this one. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. Amen. That was a good scripture right there, right? I like that scripture. God wants to give you the desires of your heart. Now, if God wants to give you the desires of your heart, you better have a what heart? Loving heart. A hot, clean heart, pure heart, loving heart, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Right? Mark chapter 12, verse 30. What's the greatest commandment? This is the one right after that. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. Okay? So, I, that's why I think that the heart and the soul are not the same thing, because the soul actually kind of has the mind in it, so it's kind of, you know, it's kind of hard to figure it out, but you shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Now, I'm going to tell you something, and that is this. The most precious thing in the universe to God is your heart. Amen. Isn't that what we say when we get saved? Is we say, I'm giving my heart to God. Everyone in here would say at some point, Yes, Pastor, I gave my heart to God. Yes. God's not going to take your heart from you. If you want to curse God and die, you can curse God and die. God is not going to stop you. I think he would encourage you not to curse God and die. But your heart is such a precious and valuable commodity. 
Okay, so let's talk about David here real quick. This is the next chapter, right? Then a champion came out from the armies of the Philistines named Goliath from Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span, which is nine feet tall. You know, I meant to put a mark on the wall about nine feet. The, the ceiling here is 13 feet, nine inches. But you can imagine, um, yeah, I'm six feet, a little over six feet. So add half of my height on top of me. That's how big Goliath was, right? And what does David come out? David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail. Let no man's heart fail on account of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. What was happening is the entire army, their whole heart was failing. And how many of you know to win a battle, you have to have heart? Amen. Right? Isn't that what they say? It's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. I'll say that again. It's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. Yeah. Amen. Do you know that most of what the devil does to us is just to cause us to give up? Yes, he does. You know, the devil knows he can't beat you, but he can get you to give up. I can tell you right now, we have 1,151 people on our email list. Well, I think 1,153 now. And each of those represents a whole family. A lot of them do. So there's thousands of people that have come to River Rock over the years. All the enemy has to do, he doesn't have to beat you. He just has to get you to quit. That's good. Amen. And he's got all the tricks in his bag that work over and over again. Number one, I got offended. Seriously, you, uh, you don't know how many people will quit coming to church because on Sunday morning I didn't look at them. No, I, I know. You want to laugh, don't you? I would laugh if it wasn't so sad. That's the devil's number one thing, is just get us offended at each other. Or, oh, I know another one's good. I, I'll get two people who are offended at each other, and then they both quit. Okay, you've got to have heart to make it in this life. You've got to have heart. You've got to have commitment. Do you think about it. Do you realize that every good thing in your life came out of commitment? Your marriage, your children, your career, right? It all comes out of commitment. And yet Americans are running away from commitment faster than ever. How about your church life? How about your church family being committed to them? How, oh, I like this. I actually was listening to a message somebody preached, I can't remember who it was, about a month or two ago. And they talked about how, oh, I know who it was. I actually am trying to buy their book. I remember who it was now. And they said that the heart is actually, they figured out that the heart is right here. Your heart pump is up here but your heart is here, right? And what does this say? Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flows springs of living water. And what's the more common verse about springs of living water? From your belly will flow springs of living water. So your spiritual heart is in your belly. And kings are out camping this weekend. There are uh, Korean friends, uh, more than our friends, they're our key people. Um, but you know, the Koreans pray from right here. And they pray really loud. 
They get, because it comes out of here. This is where your heart is. If there's some fight in your dog, you know, that's what you're. No, you guys are looking at me like I'm making this up. Okay, you all do it. Run, two, three. See, it came right from there. That's where your heart's at, right? The king's heart is like channels of water in the hand of the Lord. He turns it wherever he wishes. So sometimes when I get discouraged about what some politician is saying, I wonder if the Lord is turning their heart to get something good to come out of what they're doing that doesn't look good to me. Right? Or if I'm praying for a politician, I'll pray that the Lord turns their heart. Right? And don't we always say that? Oh, Lord, work on their heart. I mean, that's something we just say all the time, right? So the Lord turns our hearts. Well, he turns the hearts of the king, for sure. Every man's way is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the heart. I'm talking a lot about church stuff today, but so be it. That's just kind of the way it's happening. Uh... <laughs> Have you never noticed that when you deal with people in church, they never say, oh, I was wrong? No, not never. Never is a long time. But sometimes they always have a way of making themselves right. Oh, wait a minute. That's everybody. That has nothing to do with church people. Isn't that everybody? Everybody is right in their own eyes. When they do something wrong, they don't say, well, I'm going to do something wrong now. I'm going to leave my wife and children. No, they make up a story in their head that somehow they're right. Every man's way is right in his own eyes. You say, Pastor, I think you're just making that up. There's the scripture. <laughs> it's in the Bible. I wasn't making that up. It's right in front of you. Every man's way is right in his own eyes. But the Lord weighs the heart. Did the Lord take your pump out and put it on a scale? No. The Lord's looking at your heart. You cannot hide your heart from the Lord. He sees it. He sees it when you're floating down the river in the flood, and he sees it when you're locked in your closet at home. He weighs your heart. <clears throat> Amen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding so what does that tell us we look in the soul and we see the soul is the mind will and emotions but here the writer of Proverbs says trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding what's your own understanding your mind will and emotions Amen. you know when you're making a bad decision it's your mind, will, and emotions a lot of times, right? Right. And then you got to go with your heart. Mind, will, and emotions will betray you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. That's when God tells you to do something that makes no sense. And you do it because you trust in the Lord because you hear his voice. Amen. That's good. Amen. 
Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Ezekiel 36, 26. The Lord wants to give you a new heart. Right? How about a clean heart? Psalm 51, 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Right? So we, we, need, a, we need a clean heart created in us. And we need our spirit renewed. That's right. That's right. Come on. Right? That's right. Because our whole heart can... What, what can our heart do? It can get hard. Yes, it can. Right? Our heart can get hard. And really, God actually created our hearts to be able to get hard to protect ourselves sometimes. But then when we've been hurt so many times, our heart's so hard, we can't let anybody in. We can't have an authentic relationship anymore. Because our heart got too hard. That's where we have to ask God to create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Right? Mmm. Oh, is there a reward for having a pure heart? Yeah. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Amen. Wow. Lord. Mm. How do you have a pure heart? Whoa. Woo. <clears throat> here's a scripture that we read. You know, here's one of these scriptures. There's so many scriptures. Remember, there's over a thousand scriptures with heart in them. But there's a bunch of scriptures we read. We never get to the heart part. We remember the other parts. Here's one of them. For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit of joints and marrow. And way down at the end, it says, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Hmm. For the word of God is living and acted sharper than any two-edged sword. Oh, we say that all the time, don't we? Woo, got my sword with me today, yeah. right? Then sometimes we go piercing to the division of soul and spirit, dividing of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, but the discerning of thoughts and the intention of the heart. And you know, if you're reading the Bible with a soft heart and an open heart, you're getting those, ooh, little stabs, aren't you? Like, oh, oh, right? When you stop, when you can read the Bible and you don't get those, your heart's too hard. All right? Jeremiah 17, 10. I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give to each man according to his ways, according to the results of his deeds. Thank you. Right? How about this? How about my favorite, one of my favorite non-biblical proverbs is the Lord rewards those who do right when nobody's looking. Right? The Lord searches your heart, my friends. And he tests the mind, but that's another sermon. <laughs> Jeremiah 29, 13. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Yeah. All your heart. Did I snag that off your Facebook? <laughs> Yo, I did snag that somewhere. That's probably where I snagged that. See, post on my Facebook and I might snag your picture, right? You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. And I think really that that's really for most people when you hear their testimonies, at some point they were looking for God with as much of their heart as they could muster, right? And then what happens at the end is Romans chapter 10 verse 9. 
We quote this scripture all the time. Look at this. That if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Even your salvation has to do with your heart. You believe in your heart. And the full lesson out of here is that your mouth reveals what's in your heart. Amen. Right? You know, we all do that. If you meet someone who's bitter, you know they have a bitter heart. If you meet someone who's hard, they have a hard heart. If you meet someone who's loving, they have a loving heart. It's really... How many learned something new about the heart today? Yes, amen. amen. That's a good one, isn't it? That's a good one. And not only that, you could preach 10 more. I'm not, but this is good. I, I really enjoyed this. Um, so, let me tell you this. You look all like family today, but just on the off chance that there's someone here who's never given their heart to the Lord, we want to give you an opportunity. And so, it says right here that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So if you're here this morning and you do not know for sure that you are saved and you're going to heaven, I'm going to give you a chance to raise your hand. So let's all bow our heads, close our eyes. If that's you, if you've never given your heart to the Lord and you want to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, I want you to raise your hand real quick. Or stick up your hand. Okay, I don't see any hands except for Elmer. We'll get Elmer saved afterwards. All right, you can open your eyes now. If some of you didn't get that, maybe you're a visitor, Elmer. Oh, are you saved, Elmer? Do I need to lead you to the Lord? Okay, Elmer's all good. All right, well, I'm excited. I'm glad. I think it's cool to say River Rock is a church with a heart. Amen, Amen. would you agree? All right. All right.